Let's turn to uh, a couple experts. One who uh, uh, has been a women's oh. open champion in her career. As we're sticking with the European team. It was Suzanne Pedersen's squad who retained the Solheim Cup in Spain after the team ended, you know, with the tie with the United States. So they're able to retain the Solheim Cup. The aforementioned major champion and Karen Stuffles in Golf Week senior writer. Beth Ann Nichols now join us on the show. Was looking at some Solheim Cup history. Because on the Ryder Cup side, we've seen the home team win five straight. Karen, we saw that from 1998 to 2005 in the Solheim Cup. Do you think these things are just cyclical? Or, or has it gotten to the point where the, the home crowd environment has such an outsized impact? I, I really do think that the, the home crowd environment is, um, is something that really until you actually step foot inside the arena and you, you're hitting shots uh, in that environment, uh, I can't really put it into words to describe just what it's like. Uh, for me, on the, with the Solheim Cup, it's a little tamer than the Ryder Cup. And um, I've been to some Ryder Cups too, and I found the, the atmosphere for the visitors uh, really quite intense and somewhat threatening, threatening at times. I mean, it wasn't, it's, a, it's a tough place to play for sure. Solheim Cup is a little softer, um, but nevertheless, you know, when somebody claps and cheers for a missed putt, I mean, that's kind of kind of hits you in the stomach where it hurts. So you, it's something that you're not used to, and something you do have to to get acclimatized to. It's very noisy. It's very rowdy. Uh, golf in general is played uh, in a very quiet sort of environment. So it's something completely different. And to prepare yourself for it, um, especially if you're a rookie, it's, it's really difficult. Beth Ann, how would you compare the American team culture in a Solheim Cup versus the American team culture in a Ryder Cup? Easier to bond, in your opinion, for the American Solheim Cup players? Not necessarily, no. <laughs> you know, I, I think, you know, there's always ego. There's always going to be drama when you have a, a group of 12 together, whether it's men or women. You know, and I think that's why the captain really has to look at the personalities that that are on the team and who they're dealing with. And I think that was why it was such a good mix with Stacey Lewis, because this was by and large a more reserved team with her five rookies who have a lot of them have more naturally quiet uh, personalities. They they lead by example rather than, you know, raw, raw cheers and and very different than than the passion and the energy that we see from Suzanne Pedersen. So. You know, I definitely think that from a culture standpoint with five rookies on the team and given, you know, what, what Stacey saw in, in, in 2021, she really wanted to make sure that these players understood what they were playing for. And so that's why she made the history such a big deal. They were literally walking displays of history on their golf bags, on their hats. They knew what, what they had stepped into. And so, uh, you know, this was a huge building block here for Team USA, I think, because a lot of these players will be on the team for, for the next decade. And, and so that's why I think, as Angela Stanford has said, it was sort of a foundational shift for Team USA. I think what's lacking a lot in the game is seeing collaboration between LPGA Tour, PGA Tour, having more combination-type events. And cross-collaboration between the Solheim Cup and the Ryder Cup. Karen, do you wish there, there was more of that, especially with the opportunity that we had with those two events in Europe back-to-back -back weeks? Well, I think that's an interesting prospect. Um, I don't necessarily think that the Ryder Cup, Solheim Cup would be the place to do it. I, I think you could make a, a very good argument for a mixed President's Cup uh, to, to a certain extent. I think you could bolster the, uh, an international side with some of the international women players. And, and I think you would have a, an incredibly interesting matchup. Um, I, I think the way things are, I mean, obviously the, the women's game is always going to be helped along if, uh, if, if men and the PGA tour or the, you know, kind of want to get involved a little bit more um, because we see it in tennis when you have, uh, the women's major, the, you know, the majors played at the same location. You, you get a bunch of people tuning in and watching. And, and sometimes the, the women's tennis takes more of the center stage than the, than the men's game. So I think you, you might be able to, to draw on that a little bit. Um, but I think the one place I'd like to see, see happen might be the President's Cup. Beth Ann, we saw some great things at Finca Cortesine, including a tie. Europe retains the cup. But there was some internet and social media buzz that perhaps the players should have been sent back out 
for a playoff of some sort. How much was that just, you know, Twitter or X now, chatter versus something that potentially the Slam Cup could do differently than the Ryder Cup? You know, I think this is a situation in which the women should take the lead here because I keep trying to imagine if the role had been reversed and this had happened at a Ryder Cup in today's modern era of social media, <laughs> I, I think it would have just been an absolute uproar that that there wasn't some type of playoff. And so I think the men probably would would change the format. And so I would like to see the women, you know, take the lead on this one because it, and I don't think it's just sour grapes on a lot of the American players, part, the part of the American players. I, I I really think many of them that I've spoken to take a bigger picture approach to this. <laughs> and I think that they, they are looking from an entertainment standpoint and the value of, of, of the fans sitting on the couch saying, wait a second, how, how can this be that it's a time I'm, I'm confused when this is an event that brings a lot of people in to watch that don't normally watch women's golf. And so I think to have the most dramatic ending possible to where we have a very clear winner where somebody who lost isn't walking away saying, hey, we didn't lose, we tied. What? <laughs> <laughs> You're crying and the other team's celebrating. Clearly you lost. So, you know, I, I just think we don't need that. that. Karen, is it competitor? Uh, I, uh, you, yeah, what do you think? No, I, 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 I disagree. I mean, in that... I think that for, for a lot of Europeans, uh, we're used to sports that have ties. So for there to be a definitive winner is not uh, as high on our priority list. Over here in America, there's, it's very much about a win. I mean, it's, um, it's hard to imagine that a, a sport could have a tie. I mean, you think of, of soccer, there's nil-nil draws. You think about cricket, people play for five days and it ends up with a tie in cricket. <laughs> so there's all kinds of things that happen over in Europe that cause ties. Now, the one thing I would say with regards to the Solon Cup and Ryder Cup, could you imagine sending off one person to shoulder the burden of the whole team after you've played for three days and the responsibility just falls down on that one person when it's been a team event all week long? Unless you can find a way to get every single one of those players on the golf course and playing as a team, then why would you have a playoff? And, and to be honest with you, if you're an American side and you're, and you're trying to regain the cup, you know that your points number is 14 and a half. If you don't get to 14 and a half, you didn't achieve the goal of winning the cup back. Whether it's a tie fine, you, you can still say it's a tie, but you didn't achieve the goal. If you're a European, you know that you have to get to 14 points to retain the trophy. There is a definitive line there in the sand as to what happens anyway. Just because we, we want over here in America finalised results doesn't necessarily mean it's the right thing to do. And I do think that, that, you know, if you send one or two players out, I mean, imagine how they would feel if it didn't work out and they were the ones that were, you know, everything was riding on after three days of a whole team. If we can devise a way for all 12 players to do it, uh, you, might, you might kind of get me on board with it. But otherwise, leave it as it is. I'd love to pull Solheim Cup players and Ryder Cuppers <laughs> and see if they would want a mm. playoff or that's too much pressure. Give me the ball, George. Unfair. Give me the ball. <laughs> Barely put on one person. <laughs> Last question, and it, it's, it's amazing how this has now happened with both the Solheim Cup and the Ryder Cup. The Europeans have won five of seven in the Solheim Cup. They've won 10 of 14 in the Ryder Cup. So they've had the sustained runs now on both sides. Uh, Karen, let's start with you. Is that endemic of team culture? Is that just a streak they've been able to put together from a Solheim Cup side? If you're an American fan, should you be concerned they haven't won since 2017? What's your read? I, I think it's a I think it's a depth thing as much as anything else that 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 the European teams are much deeper than they have in the past. You're seeing players go and play on the LPGA Tour and the PGA Tour. They're not just playing their golf in Europe anymore. They're much more world travellers. They're exposed to the very best competition week in, week out. So they're much used, more used to seeing these top American stars um, play and what, what they're going to be exposed to and expected of them in terms of the game. So I think you're seeing a, a really well-prepared uh, set of European players in terms of their own games. And, and they have a bunch of people behind them that knows how to get the most out of them in, in any kind of match play situation. Um, so I think you're seeing a bunch of really motivated players that, that for years have been seen as the underdogs, still playing with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, 
you know, thinking about, you know, people don't think we can win this. People don't think we can achieve this. And, and any time you put that kind of thought in, in, in a player's mind, they're, they're always going to try and rise to the occasion because that's just the nature of, of competitive sport. So I think you have that as a, as a bit of an influence there with the with the European team, and I think for, for the American side, I think they've they've been a little bit used to to winning, sort of certainly Presidents Cups and things like that. And it's very easy to be uh, take it a little bit for granted, especially with the you know from the Presidents Cup side that they play every other year as well. They they're used to dominating in that, so it's it's hard to kind of get up and running to play against a very highly driven European team. What do you think, Beth Ann? Time for another task force, maybe Solheim Cup style? No, I actually think the men are more in need of that than, than the American women. <laughs> I think the American women are, are on a good path here. And I think what Stacey Lewis did these past two years to, to lay the foundation, as I said earlier, to get players to buy in so that, you know, she's obviously going to be the captain next year, which is, which is great in terms of carrying on this momentum, but so that the next captain will have players who are already bought in to, to what you're trying to accomplish. And so I, I definitely feel like this was a big shift for Team USA this year, and they have a lot to build on. And, and I don't think there's anything to worry about going into next year when you look at some some pairings that, that we've never seen before that did quite well in Spain that I'm sure we'll see again. And just a lot of camaraderie where this it meant something to this team. They they cried when they lost for a reason. Mm. Well, we uh, heard or when they, they tied. <laughs> yeah. We heard the European men singing, Europe's on fire, USA is terrified. That's been the results on both the Solheim Cup side and the Ryder Cup side. Beth Ann and Karen, uh, appreciate it. <laughs>